Notion drops so many features that the average person with a life outside of productivity tools can't keep up. Luckily for you, Notion is my entire personality. So here are the five Notion features that you don't know exist, but can save you a lot of time. Subscribe to get better with Notion. Let's dive in. The first one's a quick one. Notion now works offline. I'll drop Notion's official tutorial in the description. But yes, to those who keep commenting on my channel, they now have it. By the way, I could never control that. I just make Notion videos. But yeah, it, it's available now. The second update, I'll use Headquarters, which is my premium Notion template. If you haven't checked it out, it's got over 3,500 users at this point, and it's built around the 10 best productivity methods in the world. Trust me, I tested pretty much all of them and then built this template here inspired by the ones that actually helped me out. So I'll show you this next feature here by just adding a task. We'll add it to today, a task. That's pretty creative. Let's say the urgency here is urgent. The importance here is importance. These two here are inspired by the Eisenhower matrix. And let's say the state of mind here is flow state. This will help me in planning out my week. We'll say the bucket here is to do with my job, the project. Let's just create a new one. Project one. How can someone be this creative? And we'll just ignore the other stuff. I just created a bunch of fake tasks. Obviously, please call them something more useful than task. But here, it might be a bit difficult to distinguish which ones are more important than the others. Now, obviously, under weeks tasks here, I can see easy, quick, quick, and flow. That does help me out. But right now, just the word easy is yellow or flow is in blue. I wish it could be the entire thing. Well, now it can. Let's click on settings here. And here you can see conditional color. If we click that, we can add a new color setting. So let's say for these here, it's to do with a state of mind. So now you can see this entire thing is yellow, this entire thing is blue. And of course, it doesn't have to be just to do with a flow state. We could change that and let's do something else. This color setting here is importance instead. So now you can see this is yellow and this is yellow. That's because that's coming from important here, which is yellow. This one here is not important, which is gray. So we know now to do the yellow tasks first. So under weeks tasks, I have a setting where I'm only seeing the tasks that I haven't completed. But let's say I complete this one, for example, I can still find it under all this week. Now, let's say on here, I want the tasks that I've completed to show up as green. Well, what I can do is click on settings here, conditional color, add a new color setting, tasks completed, where the task is checked in and then page background green. It's that simple. Now the tasks that are completed show up as green. By the way, you can actually have multiple. So you can add another rule in here. Let's say we want to see importance in here as well. So now we can see the important tasks in yellow here. Now let's say this task here, by the way, is important. Why is this not now showing in yellow? Well, it's because in conditional color, whatever is at the top of this list will be the color that shows. So for this task here, both the importance should be yellow and it is checked in so it should be green. And because this is at the top, it is the one that wins. But if we simply drag this down, as you can see, task now becomes yellow. So you really have quite a lot of control here. So this can get really useful and intuitive to the way that you work. So let me just take a quick note. What a wonderful day. Awesome, I've taken that note. Now let's take another one. Oh no, I haven't subscribed yet. I really should. Cool, so I've taken these notes. And of course, if I wanna find these notes, I can scroll down and go to quick notes. And in here, I can find them. Obviously, if we label them with life buckets, such as job, it will show up on the job page. Or if this note is labeled with project one, it will show up on the project one page as well. I'll just quickly show you that. If I click here on project one, open up the project one page, here I can see, oh no, I haven't subscribed yet. That note is sitting here under the project one page. But let's say on this quick notes page, we don't want to have to open up this notes to see whatever the note is here, blah, blah, blah. And then let's say this one here is also blah, blah, blah. We don't have to want to click here to open in order to read this. We want to be able to scroll these down and archive them without having to open up this page. Well, there's this new feature that you might have missed. If we right click here on notes and do duplicate, what we can do here is change the layout to feed. So this allows me to scroll down and see these as a feed. And what we can do here is click on property visibility and choose which things do we want to be able to see here. So let's say we want to be able to see the archive button so we can easily click that we want to see when it was created we want to see the life bucket and the project and let's say the project of interest as well now when i'm scrolling i can see all of these in a feed and let's say i want to archive oh no i haven't subscribed yet i really should because you decided to subscribe i can click on archive and it gets removed from here and that's because i duplicated this tab here which has the filter of saying where archive is not ticked 
So when we duplicated that view, then this filter here got duplicated as well. Long story short, this feed view can be really, really useful. For me, I think Quick Notes is the best application for it. The next feature here you probably haven't tried out is this one here, Automations. So you do have to upgrade your Notion account in order to use this, but I use Automations a lot on my personal account, and this is really useful for headquarters users specifically, because what you can do is use trigger words. So let's say this task here, let's say it actually had the word meeting, for example. Well, we could set up an automation where if the task has the word meeting, then automatically it gets added to a project called meetings. And that happens in the background. This is also extra useful if you use the Notion calendar a lot, because let's say in here, I write meeting with your mum. I can now write that task in here and never leave the Notion calendar. And that task will show up here in headquarters. And because of this word meeting, that will then be triggered to add that to the relevant project. There are an endless amount of opportunities here with Notion automations. Again, you do need a paid Notion account to do this. But if you spend a lot of time in Notion labeling tasks or doing manual stuff, this can be a great time saver. And the last one is a simple one that will save you a lot of time from using other apps. Once again, Notion is helping us to build the ultimate tech stack where we can have everything in the one place. If I scroll down here and go to a meeting with your mum, all I can do now is click on these three dots here and click on dictate. And this will allow me to talk like I'm doing right now and it will be automatically transcribed. Super useful if you haven't used this before. So now we don't need another transcription app. We can do that right in here in Notion. By the way, if you want your tasks, your projects, your notes, your life buckets, your journaling, your fitness tracking, and so much more, then check out headquarters. There's a link in the description to the template or click on this video here to see the full tour. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in this video.